You're watching the Realme GT2 Pro disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the bio-based polymer back. It's sort of see-through, you can kind of see the foam pad through the back. On the back there's some heat transfer graphite padding. Now the camera lens cover has to be removed. As we saw in the durability video, the camera bezel and lens covers are made of glass. However, it does have a metal frame. There are 17 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Now the top plastic cover can be lifted up and removed. The dual LED flash are located on this flex cable as well as the light sensor. The NFC antenna is located to the top right and there's another antenna flex cable on the top. There's also a large graphite film which helps transfer heat. Now that we have access to the battery cable we're going to disconnect that first. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are two coaxial cables on the right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's graphite film and copper tape covering the front facing camera connector as well as the top speaker which need to be peeled off. Here's a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. There's one more coaxial cable on the bottom left of the board that needs to be disconnected by popping it off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board that needs to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. There's a 50 megapixel primary camera, a 40x microscope lens, and a 50 megapixel super wide angle lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by popping them off and there's a secondary microphone on the top corner. There's copper tape over the front shields and rubber gaskets around the connectors. There's also a liquid damage indicator which is this white sticker and it remains white indicating there's no liquid damage and no water got in during our durability test. Once the copper tape on the front is peeled off, it reveals two thermal pads on these chips. Here's a better look with the thermal pads removed. Taking a look at the back, there's copper tape on the main camera, as well as copper tape on the back shields and thermal paste. The proximity sensor is located on the top corner. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see thermal paste on top of the LPDDR5 RAM, which is sitting over the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. We can also see thermal pads on these chips. Here's a better look with the thermal paste and the thermal pads removed. Now it's time to remove the bottom cover. There's some more graphite film on this bottom cover to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. There are four flex cables and a coaxial cable that need to be disconnected from the subboard. Now the subboard can be lifted up, but be careful since the other end of the coaxial cable is still attached underneath. There are rubber gaskets around the connectors, and the primary microphone is located underneath the shield. The SIM reader is located on the back. If you needed to replace your screen, you need to remove the back plate 
and then remove the screws on the bottom cover and remove the cover itself. Disconnect the flex cables and coaxial cables from the subboard and remove the subboard. Then you'd have to remove the red rubber gasket for the screen cable. At that point, you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Pry old screen off. And when you're prying your screen off, as well as when you're installing it, you're going to have to make sure to also pass the flex cable for the fingerprint reader through the slit in the frame. Once you have your old screen off, you apply a new adhesive and reapply your new screen, making sure you run both cables for the fingerprint reader and the screen cable through the openings in the mid frame. And then you'd reassemble the phone. The bottom speaker can be lifted up and removed. There's a mesh filter over the speaker opening. To remove the battery, there are pull tabs provided on either side to help you pry it off. Here's a better look at the dual cell battery with 2500 milliamp hours each. Once the battery adhesive pouch is peeled back, there's a foam padding on the bottom that needs to be peeled off. And then the charger port flex cable can be peeled off. Here's a better look at the USB-C charger port, and there's a red rubber gasket around it. Once the charger port's removed, we can see the x-axis linear motor or vibrator motor on the bottom, and it's held in place with adhesive. Here's a better look at the x-axis linear motor with the foam pad removed. These flex cables connect the main board to the subboard. Once those are peeled back, we can see a large vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery and the motherboard. The thermal paste they use on this phone, they refer to as the diamond gel thermal paste. The flex cable for the power button and volume keys are held down with adhesive, so if you need to replace those, or the keys themselves, you would have to pry the flex cables off, and there's a rubber gasket inside the frame, you would pull out that rubber gasket, giving you access to pulling the cable out and the key. The earpiece speaker on top is held down with adhesive, so if you need to replace that, you would have to apply some heat and gently pry it off. Also there's a rubber gasket and mesh filter over the microphone openings, and the bottom speaker opening over the frame. For the repairability score, I give this phone a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.